In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, this Sunday is the Feast of Corpus Christi, the Feast of the Body and Blood of Christ. I want to set that up a little bit. In fact, I want to do a lot of setup for it and come to that probably just at the end. We'll see how things go. Back in the 18th century, after a whole lot of religious warfare in Europe, the decision was made that if the prince or the king or the emperor of some area or other in Europe wanted to be Catholic, then he and all of his people would be Catholic. That would be the official religion of that part of Europe. If they wanted to be Protestant of some flavor or other, that would become the official religion of that part of Europe. Fair enough, okay? Now, you can still hear people in Europe say, oh, well, that's the German part of the country, and therefore that's, uh, that's Protestant, or we're Catholic here, but they're Protestant. There. It's really interesting, okay? You find the same thing in, well, God help us in Ireland. That's Catholic Ireland. This is Protestant Ireland. Maybe it goes the other way. But once upon a time in Germany, back in the late 30s and early 40s, there was a guy named Dietrich Bonhoeffer. And Bonhoeffer, well, Bonhoeffer was a clergyman in the German church, which in those days meant he was Lutheran and he was Protestant. Okay, because the German church was Protestant in his part of the world. Okay. One Palm Sunday, he happened to be in Rome. And like everybody else in Rome on Palm Sunday, he went to St. Peter's Square to see, whoa, the Palm Sunday procession. And he saw people there carrying palms every color, every shade of black to brown, to white, every color of yellow, pink. If there had been visitors from Mars, they would have been green. And they were all doing one thing. They were carrying palm branches and they were all singing one song and it was Hosanna. Bonhoeffer, who had grown up in the German Protestant church, wrote home after this experience and said to somebody that he wrote to, I have never understood why we say the church is Catholic, why we say the church is universal, until I saw all these people from all over the world doing one act of praise of God. Two things. There isn't. There isn't anywhere in the world a brand of Christianity that can get together that kind and that number of varieties of human color and culture and background and language. No other brand of Christianity like Catholicism. I'm going to boast a little bit about that as we go along. but. I want you to bear that in mind. But I want to go back to the first Palm Sunday, when all the children of Israel, and they were all pretty much the same color, I imagine, were busy waving palm branches and screaming Hosanna, which is what we do on Palm Sunday, in imitation of them. Well, that didn't last long, okay? Because by Wednesday night, Jesus had been sold out by Judas, and by Thursday night, the apostles were getting ready to go hide. But on Thursday nights, on Thursday night, when Jesus was about to discover how little the apostles loved him, he did this remarkable thing. He took bread and he took wine, he broke the bread, he poured out the wine, and he gave it to them and said, this is me for you. My flesh to become your flesh, my blood to become your blood. Remember me, remember me as your flesh and blood nourishing your flesh and blood, strengthening your flesh and blood, transforming your flesh and blood from being your flesh and blood to being my flesh and blood.
St. Paul in the second reading for Corpus Christi says, because we eat and drink one bread and one cup, we are one body in Christ. Now, when St. Paul was talking about we, he was talking about Jews who had become Christians, and he was talking about Gentiles who had become Christians. And you can read the entire New Testament, and there is this great divide between Jews and Gentiles, the chosen people and the nations. I'm not telling anything that's not there. But that divide disappears. It absolutely disappears when people eat and drink the one bread and the one cup and they become one body in Christ. Now, I don't want to overstate this proposition. But for 2,000 years, it has been the, one of the chief hallmarks of what it means to be a Catholic, that we believe without questioning, without doubting, even when we cannot explain or understand, we believe without question or doubt that Jesus Christ continues to be present when we eat his flesh and drink his blood, and he continues to live in us so that we are no longer just ourselves, we are him in some way, and we are one flesh and one blood with everybody else who eats and drinks the flesh and blood of the Son of Man. Because we eat this one cup, eat this one bread, and drink this one cup, we are one body in Christ. Now, the record of the Catholic Church in the world of colonialism, and race relations and liturgical innovation and all the things, you know. Our record is not unblemished. Our record is not unblemished. But when everything is said and done, when everything is said and done, we have always maintained this one truth and sometimes we have actually managed to kind of live up to it that we are one body in Christ. And so people can come from all the corners of the earth and they can be every shade of every color that human beings can be and know that they are one in Christ, even if they are not one in any other way. That is what blonde-haired and blue-eyed Dietrich Bonhoeffer learned in Rome on that Palm Sunday. That we are one in Christ no matter where we come from. And the fact that the religion that's established in my territory is Protestant or Catholic does not mean that the Church of Christ is divided by territory or by language or by race or by culture or by financial status or educational achievement. Not by anything. The Church of Christ is not divided because the Church of Christ is the place where people eat the one loaf and drink the one cup and become one body in Christ. One body in Christ. In these days, in these days, we are all confronted with the idea that somehow or other, the division of people against one another, the division of people from one another, and the choice of people to be us versus them that that produces the most terrible kinds of violence upon individuals, upon whole communities. And we're being asked to understand that this is, this is what happens when people get comfortable being us and them. That this violence is just the natural outcome of that kind of black and white, us and them, pink and blue thinking. I don't know that there's any reason to think that that's not so. 
that what we cannot bring into our world, we will throw out, and if we cannot just throw it out because it won't go, then we will kill it, and then we'll throw it out and bury it. That's human nature. That's been going on since Adam and Eve. Well, I don't know Adam and Eve, but certainly it's Cain and Abel. But we, who eat and drink the flesh and blood of Jesus Christ, we are one body in him. We may not be able to find in an abstract humanity something that makes us care about one another. Not all humans are equally terrible about. We may not be able to find in our shared citizenship something that makes us want to help each other achieve the fullness of citizenship because citizenship is a human thing. It's a thing of constitutions and laws and it's divisible and it can only be divided so many times before, well, there's nothing left. It's like pie on Thanksgiving. Before too long, I've got his whipped cream, which is fine, I guess. Some of us don't like pumpkin pie. But it's divisible, and you can't cut it up too many ways before it all disappears. So if we look for some one thing in this world, one thing of this world, that we share in such a way that it can make us one, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. And I'm going to be honest, brutally honest. I'm not quite sure that the Catholic Church can make us all one. Because we haven't always done that. But I'm going to say this, that one Lord Jesus Christ who gives himself to us to make us one body with him, he can make us all one. Well, you say to me, well, how about the Mohammedans, and how about the Jews, and how about the Buddhists, and how about the Taoists, and how about the Shin, and how about the atheists? That assumes, that argument assumes, that us and them thinking somehow or other gives value to them so that they can be them and we can be us and that that us, them thinking that is breeding so much violence these days that somehow or other that will not eventually produce violence. That's just wrong thinking. There's no history to support that. And people can say, well, you know, well, John Lennon said, I think it was John Lennon, one of the, or George Harrison, one of those guys. <coughs> Imagine there's no heaven. Imagine there's no hell. Nothing to fight for, nothing to fight about, but only humanity. Well, in a country where God and religion have been shoved further and further away because we don't want to impose anything on anybody else, what we wind up with is that desire to impose ourselves on someone else. And whether it's to impose ourselves on their neck or to impose ourselves on their buildings, it doesn't make any difference. We're still imposing ourselves. But Christ, Christ does not impose. He says, here I am for you. My body, my blood, to make you one with me, to make you one in me me. The mystery of the body and blood of Christ, the mystery of this one bread that nourishes us all with one life that we did not discover or create, but is simply his gift to us as he gives himself to us, transforms us into being able to be a gift to someone else. So that that me, them thing becomes not 
me and you. It becomes me for you. Now, I cannot force somebody else to be himself for me. But I, like Christ, can put myself out there and say, this is me for you. Because I remember him. If you remember him, you remember him. Can we be for each other then? That's the question. That's the question that only a Christian can ask. It's the question that only a Christian dare ask. Because it's the question that only a Christian understands can be asked. Not because we're Christians, but because Christ has made himself the bread of our life. We are not dealing and we shortchange ourselves and we shortchange the world when we let ourselves think that whether we're talking about a virus or whether we're talking about violence, that these are only political issues, that these are only medical issues. They are deeply and profoundly issues of faith, issues of theology, issues of religion. They are issues about which we as religious people must be deeply concerned and to the resolution of which we must be deeply committed because everybody else, everybody else but us is committed to this truth that we eat this bread and drink this cup we become one body in him, in him. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.